I get this question quite a bit. Is it okay to take sleeping pills to help me sleep? The quick answer is sometimes. I'll explain. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. The normal amount of sleep for an adult is seven to nine hours. Regularly sleeping less than six hours or more than 10 hours is associated with health problems. What's regular? It's more days during the week than not and more weeks of the month than not. But even having three or more days in a row of poor sleep can have immediate effects on your ability to think and focus and can cause inflammation in the body. Have you noticed that if you have a stretch of poor sleep lasting several days, you can feel run down and even get sick? That's because insomnia also compromises your immune system through the body's stress response of increasing cortisol release. Also, insomnia can worsen other medical problems like mania. Not sleeping in a person with bipolar disorder is like adding lighter fluid to a fire. In that case, you'll probably wanna take something to keep from exploding into mania. If you have a pain disorder, insomnia can increase your pain sensitivity and make you less responsive to pain medications if you're taking them. So sleep is essential, and the situations I just mentioned are all good reasons to take something to help you sleep if you're building up a sleep debt. Sleep debt is a term used to refer to having consecutive nights of inadequate sleep for what your body needs. If your body needs seven hours of sleep and you have three nights in a row of only sleeping five, you're six hours behind or have a six hour sleep debt. If you take a sleeping pill that helps you sleep for eight hours, three nights in a row, you've only made up three of the hours because you got one extra hour for three nights. Incidentally, sleep debt does not use perfect math. If you chronically sleep two hours less than what your body should be sleeping, and then you correct the problem and start sleeping well consistently for weeks, your body recovers and resets itself. So if you've been not sleeping for a while and have 100 hours of sleep debt, just say, if you start sleeping very well for a few weeks, you're never gonna make up an extra 100 hours, but your body will still reset itself. If you have a situation that makes you lose sleep for a few nights in a row, sleeping pills are a good way to temporarily help you get back on a regular sleep rhythm and catch up on some sleep. But there's a downside to taking sleeping pills, especially if you take them on a regular basis. And what's regular? More nights than not, and more weeks than not. Many people who start taking sleeping pills will fall into the habit of taking them every night. And here are some of the problems with nightly usage. Sleeping pills can decrease your sharpness or make you cognitively fuzzy. This fuzziness may be subtle and something that you don't notice until you stop taking them. The fuzziness may look like trouble finding words, and it feels like it takes more time for you to get out what you wanna say. Or it may take you longer to make decisions because the pills compromise your ability to problem solve and analyze a situation. There have been some studies associating sleeping pills with dementia, and you may have seen videos of people talking about how sedatives cause dementia. But those studies don't prove that the pills cause dementia. Instead, the people with known cognitive decline also happen to take sleeping pills in these studies. And it could be that as people get older and have other medical issues, they start taking sleeping pills. And the cognitive decline has more to do with their age and condition and not the pills per se. So it's not clear that the pills cause dementia, but at a minimum, the science does support the idea that regular use of sleeping pills can cause a temporary downshift in your mental abilities that can be upshifted when you stop taking the medication regularly. That brings me to the next downside of taking sleeping pills, which is tolerance and dependence. Most sleeping pills do not work indefinitely. Most people develop a tolerance to them such that the dose that you were taking stops working and after a while you need a higher dose. But let's say that doesn't happen to you and you take your trazodone every single night and you sleep well, but if you don't take the medication, you hardly sleep at all. Not sleeping without the medication doesn't prove that it was the medication that's responsible for your sleep. It might be, but if you've been taking it for years, you could be sleeping on your own, but when you skip the pill, you get rebound to insomnia. This rebound thing is real and is one of the reasons why I usually hesitate starting people on Ambien. 
I usually give them a speech about taking it maybe only nightly just to bank some good restorative sleep and then dropping back to taking it only after you haven't slept for a couple of nights in a row. At that rate, you're taking it one to two times a week to catch up and undo some of the damage from the insomnia. This segues into my last downside of sleeping pills that's related to tolerance. Your medication can work for a while, then stop working. Then you have to take a break from that medication for it to be effective again. What do you do during that break? You get a prescription for another medication or you take something over the counter. And you take that until it stops working. And you can be in this cycle of constantly switching medications to find one that works. And that's a drag to have to keep going back to your doctor for something else. Also, just because the medication wasn't effective at helping you sleep, doesn't mean that it's not affecting your body in other ways. The most common side effects are grogginess, mental slowing during the day, dizziness, and balance problems. If you take some of the over-the-counter sleep aids, you can get the same mental slowing, but you can also get blurred vision, dry mouth, and urinary retention. Urinary retention is where you think you've emptied your bladder, but it still feels like there's some urine left and you have to go back and finish. And don't blow off dry mouth. Sometimes dry mouth isn't a big deal. You drink more water or suck on sugarless candy and you're fine. But daily dry mouth can lead to dental cavities and be a source of bad breath. Here are some common sleeping medication options. The things that you can take over the counter are antihistamines. Histamine from the neck down is part of your immune response to allergens. But histamine in your brain keeps you awake. So when you block it, you get sleepy. The two histamines that you can get over the counter are diphenhydramine, found in Benadryl and Zequil, and doxylamine, which is found in Unisom tablet. Hydroxyzine is a prescription antihistamine that we tend to use for anxiety, but it can also help with sleep. It's not as sedating as the others, which is why a person can take it during the day for anxiety. But if your sleep trouble is from being too wound up in the evening with your mind racing and so on, any of these antihistamines may help you relax and fall asleep faster than you otherwise would. Another over-the-counter option is melatonin. Melatonin works best for shifting your sleep schedule and syncing your circadian rhythm, but it can also make you sleepy and help you fall asleep faster. Everyone responds differently to these medications, but in my experience, the slow-release version of melatonin may keep you asleep a little longer. Some people will wake up after four or five hours with the immediate release melatonin tablets. And these are all medications that you can take on your own, but just because they're easily accessible doesn't mean they're harmless. They can work in a pinch to help you sleep for a night or two, but if you use them for a long time, you can get the anticholinergic side effects that I mentioned before of dry mouth and mental cloudiness. As for medication that requires a prescription, we have drugs that activate GABA, which is a chemical that slows your brain. Examples of these medications are benzodiazepines like temazepam or clonazepam, or the non-benzos like Ambien or Lunesta. A newer class of the sleep medications work on the orexin receptor, and they're supposed to cause less daytime sedation and not have the rebound insomnia. These medications are Belsamra, Davigo, and a new one that was just approved earlier this year called QVivic. At least I think that's how you pronounce that. We have medications that are used for other purposes, but their sedating properties make them useful for sleep. And some examples of these are the antidepressants trazodone and doxepin, and the antipsychotic quetiapine. So there's several options, but the medications are still limited. None of these medications are perfect in the way that they work and can leave you feeling hungover in the morning or just not be effective. So what's the final answer on should you take a sleeping pill if you're not sleeping? My opinion is that sleeping pills can be very helpful in restoring your sleep and keeping other medical conditions away if you take them infrequently and not every day. Examples of infrequent or intermittent use would be Let's say you were going through a stressful time and you take the medication every night for two weeks straight, then whatever you were going through passes and you're able to sleep on your own. Then you don't take the medication for a couple of months until something similar happens. Another example is you generally sleep well, but you have a bad night of sleep because street noises wake you up. 
or your alarm system has a glitch and goes off, waking up your entire household. You get up to turn it off, but because the noise was so jarring, it takes you a couple of hours to fall back asleep. Then the next night you feel tense because you're sleep deprived and you're not getting sleepy as early as you thought you would since you didn't sleep well the night before. You have a presentation the next day and you can't afford to have another bad night of sleep. So you take a sleeping pill to ensure that you have a good night's sleep. And you may have a situation like this come up a few times a month or every couple of months and a bottle of 30 pills lasts you six months or more. In these situations of infrequent or intermittent use, you don't have the tolerance problems or the rebound insomnia problem that you can get with daily use. Take a look at this video on how sleeping pills work and this one on the concerning side effect of complex sleep behaviors like sleep eating and sleep walking that you can get with some sleep medication. Thanks for watching. See you next time.